Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to the show. I'm super excited to dive into today's conversation with Leela Richardson from Leela Ruth Photography. As a professional photographer, mama of two, and wife to an incredible husband, life keeps her busy. Born and raised in Mississippi, her passion for photography and creativity developed at a young age. After experimenting with various types of photography and creating award-winning images in newborn, her desire shifted to maternity and motherhood. She found such joy in seeing her clients love themselves through the images she created. Behind the insecurities, every woman wants to look and feel beautiful. Her goal now is to help women to value themselves and see their true beauty and to help photographers who share her passion. Without further ado, here is Leela. Welcome. Hi, thank you, Lisa. I'm so excited to be here. This is actually a dream of mine. (laughs) I love that. Well, Well, tell us really who you are and what you and and what you're passionate about. I know I shared a little bit in the intro, but dive in and just tell us really who you are and what you love to do the most. Well, I um, I'm a wife for sure, a, a mom, and a photographer, and a creative. I think a creative uh is really. Uh, what I started out to be like, that was Mm. before I got married, before I had kids, being a creative has always been, um, a part of me as a child. I mean, like I was, um, I love to write. I love to draw. I love to do all these things. It was just based on creativity and it just, Mm. it moved me into a space of like, this is where I love to be. This is where I want to be. I feel happy here. And, um, I think photography is just an outlet that I fell in love with. And that's just part of being creative. And it is just fulfilled me tremendously. I love, I love that. Well, your work is incredible. And my oh, lovely listeners you. out there, if you haven't already go- gone and checked out her work, you are going to have to, oh, her maternity work will absolutely blow your mind. It is <sighs> stunning, stunning, that. stunning. <laughs> I'm blushing. <you. laughs> so I want to talk about uh, creating a client experience because you can see in your work, your clients absolutely are so comfortable. They're so flawless. They're so posed. So you can see that there is a lot of work that behind the scenes that goes into creating that confidence and that comfortability for your clients. So can you share maybe some things that you do to create that incredible portraits experience for your clients? Oh, definitely. I really feel like this is the base um, for an incredible session. Mm. So preparing for a session, um, I actually meet my clients before they book. So um, I I bring them in, I get to know them, um, and they get to know me. We first, we figure out if I'm the right fit for them. And if we are, you know, we start moving forward, especially for a maternity client. Um, I want them to feel amazing in what they're wearing. So I have a wardrobe for them and they come in for a fitting and it really helps them to figure out what looks good on them, what feels good on them. And then it really hypes them up for their session. So they've seen me twice already before their session. They feel comfortable with me. They feel comfortable in what they're wearing. So then they come to the session and they're just ready to go. Like hair and makeup is offered and they just feel like it's just like, it's just a lovely pampering experience. So I feel like that foundation, um, starting out is very important for the, for the outcome of the session, because you can kind of yeah. see the re- the reaction, um, during the posing, during the flow, if, if they're kind of stiff, you kind of maybe feel like they're uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So we kind of get all that out of the way beforehand. And then when they come in for their session, they're just, they're lovely. They're just happy. They feel beautiful. They feel special. And, you know, of course they're out the session. I'm just complimenting and just like really hyping them up, showing them stuff behind the camera. And they're just like, they just don't even know how beautiful they are until they see that. And then it's just incredible. Uh, I really feel like starting out getting to know me as a person, as a mom, and just having that relationship with my clients really gives that outcome of a beautiful gallery. So I feel like that's most important. I love that. I love that you mentioned that you show them the images on the back of your camera. Oh, yes. Because oh. I, I, it's something I do too. Yes. And like, it's something like it really gives it, there's almost something where the trust switch clicks yep. on. Mm-hmm. When they're like, oh my gosh, you are good and I am beautiful. 
See, that's it right there. Right. I've heard that so many times. They don't, I feel like maybe they've been, um, I guess their mindset has been kind of warped from all of the things they see online. All of these yeah. actresses, they're all filtered up. Literally, yeah. they have, it's not really natural. And they feel like there's an expectation that is, is really not able to meet for yeah. a normal woman, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they kind of, their mindset switches right in the middle of a session. Yeah. And they're like, wow, I am that gorgeous. I am yeah. beautiful. And, you know, I've never had a client walk out and just say, you know, that was awful. You know, no. they, they just love it. They can't wait to look at all of the images. They can't, it's just a beautiful experience to see a woman kind of find herself and love herself again. It is just yeah. incredible. I agree. Um, I love that you touched a little bit on Photoshop and filters because I think that's something yes. that it's so funny because as like, as a pose photographer, as a portrait photographer, and like as an aging woman, like I love my son. I love me some Photoshop. I have no shame oh, yeah. about this. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. And I think it's interesting in this time because we want, we want the, the authenticity. We want to see, see that, but we also have to be so aware of what our clients want too. And so exactly. it's like this tricky balance of trying to figure mm -hmm. out where that fine line is with your yes. client of what they want. Exactly. So That's do you true. have conversations with your client about Photoshopping and how do you approach that? Okay. So, um, I find out a lot of things in our consultation. So, um, I ask them if they've seen my work, if they love the things and a lot of them before they even come in on their submission form, they'll say, I'm not really comfortable in my body. I have some, mm. I have uh, places where are a little lumpy or, um, I have some acne or I have stretch marks or I have things like that, that I don't, that I don't really care for, or can you take those out? And it's like I said, it's just from the beginning, starting that relationship with your client, figuring out what they want. Um, and sometimes I just say, you know, if you've seen my work, you kind of see kind of the magic that before and after, um, and a lot of them are just like, oh yes, I love that. Uh, and, and a lot of the things are not really drastic, but there are some things where no. I do take that are a little bit more drastic. A little like a, yeah, yeah, like a, just a, little a little bit modifications. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like I'm actually changing, uh, you know, really anything. It's, it's just a lot of pregnancy weight because I really yeah. want them to see, you know, you are gorgeous and, but you know, this stuff is going to go away, you know, yeah. I mean, Unless, you know, <laughs> like you yeah. just don't really, you sit on the couch all day and you're just you know, like, whatever. Yeah. But, um, like usually all this, all those things are going to go away. Um, you yeah. know, you're going to get back to yourself eventually. And, you know, I just, I just want them to, to feel incredible in that moment of, of that journey that they're taking as a mom or becoming a yeah. mom. Uh, it's not easy carrying a no. child. It's just not, um, Everything hurts. Our bodies are changing from, you know, being really different. And it's just, it's just a lot of changes and I want them to feel really comfortable. Um, and as far as like Photoshop and filters and things like that, I mean, they, they are aware that I do that so they can yep. see a before and after for sure. And they're okay with that. They, they, they say, yep. just do your magic, Leila, just do your magic. I love everything. And I've had, um, I've had a, one client, she, she actually asked to, um, reduce the editing on a portion of her session because she wanted to, um, really remember the rawness of yeah. being pregnant, the stretch marks, the lumps on her thighs, like the cellulite, like things like yeah. that is something to, um, appreciate because you are mm -hmm. bringing a life into this yeah. world. Your body is carrying this baby or multiple babies and like, you're a warrior. You're, I yeah. mean, you're, you're incredible. And those are just like marks of being a strong woman. And yeah, I just feel like, you know, when she asked me that I was all for it, I said, yes. Yeah. Um, and I was just so excited, but you know, at those moments, I'm just, I'm like, yes. And, and if they do ask if they, if I will do less, I will do yeah. less, but for the most part, everyone loves the, um, you know, the feel, the Photoshop that I do and just making them yeah. feel and look beautiful. And it's just, it's a work of art. It's yeah. still them, 
but it's yeah. a work of art. And I feel like that's, that's just kind of my take on it. And, you know, it's not for everyone and that's okay, Yeah, but yeah, I find that my clients really, really love it a lot. So I love that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm very similar because I think, I think the key really is just having that open communication with yes. your clients and saying, what do you want? I can do both. I'm at like, yeah. and that's, and that's the, the, you know, an artist can do both, exactly. you know, it's your choice. Like, how can I serve you? And exactly. I it's think it's just, your yeah. session. We will do whatever yeah. you'd like. Yeah. I love that. So speaking of like our business models, I would love to know yeah. if you're IPS, if you're all digital, if you're hybrid and how you've made that decision to serve your clients that way. I am actually IPS. Um, I serve my clients in the studio, all in person. Everything is in person, um, unless they are um, in a different state or if they're in a different place. Um, we could do Zoom calls and things like that to get to know them. And I work around people that are coming in from out of town. I do work with them. But everything is in person uh, for the most part. And I find it was a little, it was kind of challenging in the beginning to switch from digital to all IPS um, because my clientele shifted. It went from yep. people that were valuing the digital versus the people that are valuing products now. So it was a little bit of a challenge, but once I found the clients that appreciated and, and valued that, um, you know, IPS is wonderful. My, my clients appreciate everything that I do and creating and giving them um, everything. And it's just, I don't know, like ha having something that's on, on a USB versus something that's on your wall or in your hand is a completely different experience. And yeah. I feel like my clients deserved things that were in their hand that they could look at and say, wow, this is gorgeous. This is something that my yeah. kids are going to love down the road. So, yeah, I love that. What would you say would be your biggest seller when it comes to your, your business? Would it be like albums, prints? Um, so I have collections and um, it's like a little story box. Um, it has like a window in the front and it has matted prints inside. So you can do a lot of things with that. You can keep the mats inside. You can switch them out every day like a little window and you can look at your photos. Um, you can take the mats out. You can print, uh, you can frame those oh, and put them on your wall. Um, you can actually frame all of the prints that are in there and keep it as a keepsake box for like your pregnancy items or your baby items or whatever. So that's my, my big seller as far as the, um, the product. Um, I do sell wall art, um, framed canvases, things like that. And I do have a lot of new stuff that's coming in. So I'm hoping that my clients love that as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my big sellers. It's going to be the collection of the, um, the matted prints in the story box. Mm. I love that. I think I, we hear a lot from our students that there is a bit of an overwhelm when it comes to looking at all the different options, all the different print labs, mm -hmm. all of the choices that they have. Do you have any advice on finding a lab that you really work with and how to make it work? So, um, yeah, I've been through a lot of different products and <laughs> labs and over the years, I have went from like really cheap and just like really bad service, yeah. really bad products. I know. <laughs> um, but at the time it was okay because that's all I could afford yeah. as far as my yeah. pricing and things like that. It kind of made sense. And I've just kind of I've bought things and I've, you know, wasted a lot of money, which I feel like yeah. it's not really wasting. It's more an, of an investment for your business. So you yeah. can kind of figure out what works for you and what works for your clients and what your clients are looking for. Um, I yeah. do feel like getting reviews from other photographers. Like if, if I see something online and I'm like, Oh, I love that product. I'm going to, I'm going to check. I'm going to go and ask that photographer if they mind sharing where they got that from. Um, and, and most of the time, Photographers don't mind sharing. There, there are some times where yeah. it feels like it's a little bit more private for them, and that's totally fine. Um, but for the most part, they respond and tell me the vendor. I check them out. I look at the reviews, um, and I feel like if you can find a lab that kind of gives you everything uh, instead of yeah. pulling from different vendors, that's going to be amazing for you to keep everything on track. And then as they develop as a uh, product, uh, a vendor, they can offer you more and then you can offer yeah. your clients more, but you still get that connection with the lab. Um, I really feel like it's very important that the lab should have a rep for you 
um, or mm. someone that you can talk to and, you know, you can correspond with them and say, Hey, I have a problem. Can we fix this? And they can yeah. fix it for the most part. Um, you know, those types of vendors are going to, it's going to be a little bit more expensive as far as the products go, because you do get a lot of perks with the, um, the, the vendor. But I feel like that's very, very important over the time that I've spent, you know, searching in and, and ordering and all these things. I feel like it's just very important to have that, um, that relationship with the rep and, and mm -hmm. obviously, you know, that extra few dollars will go a long way having that relationship and being able to communicate with the vendor. It's incredible. I, I really feel like it's very, very important when you're looking for a lab or a vendor yeah. for products for sure. Yeah. I think a huge fear for a lot of our students too, is a lot of the times the images they're seeing on their computer are not matching their, their lab yes. and what they're getting back Yeah, and calibration and like the confusion with that. So what mm -hmm. advice do you have on that? So my advice is if you find a, a, a vendor that um, you really like and you've heard really great things, um, I would reach out to the company, get sample prints, figure out what works, and then figure out what you need to fix. Fix it. Yeah. And if it works, continue with the vendor. If it doesn't work, then move on. So, and yeah. a lot of the time they, they love to send samples. They'll say, you know, send us yeah, this and I'll send you samples of like what your work looks like. Um, and a lot of the time, I mean, if it's a really good vendor and, and, you know, and it's really highly, um, reviewed and things like that, they will have someone that will talk you through, get on the phone or whatever, and just kind of talk through everything. If you need to calibrate, yeah. you know, I don't think, uh, I think there was only one vendor that I had to calibrate for, I don't use them anymore, but the one I use now, I, I don't think I ever had a calibrate or anything like that, Yeah. but it, I will say, you know, having a good computer that's already calibrated and what yeah. you see is what you get with whatever, you, wherever you print, you're going to, you're yeah. going to see that. And I feel like that's very important. Do you need to be able to have a good computer and a good monitor, make sure that your monitor is calibrated and calibrated and everything. And that's going to help you get the results from the lab instead of all of the headache with this is green. This is, uh, I, know. <laughs> I know, right. It's, the back and forth or yeah. like the dreaded when you give the, uh, you, you hear, you get the, the email back after giving digitals and you're like, why are oh the people goodness. green? And you're like, because you went to Walmart. Yes. <laughs> right? Why are they magenta? Because you went to Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> yes. It's like, why? I know. Just order from me, please. I know. I'm just like, and, and I do say that. I do say that I can't guarantee, you know, if you, no. um, you know, print somewhere else, I can't guarantee the quality because my computer is calibrated and yeah. my, you know, my, my vendor that I get my prints from, they match yep. up. They're perfect. Yep. So I can't guarantee anything else. And they know that. So, yeah. That's great. So you've really positioned yourself as a high-end studio. So can you tell us how you were able to do so? Did you gradually increase your prices, um, gradually get a beautiful studio? Um, and how did you know you wanted to serve those high-end clientele? Wow, this is a loaded question because <laughs> I, have, I think I have spent my entire career getting to where I am right now. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've been doing this for 15 plus years. Like, yeah. I know I, I, I know I probably seem young. I'm almost 35, but I, I feel like I'm old in the industry because yeah. I feel like I've just been a workhorse trying to get where I want to go and, and see the results. And it just feels yeah. like it's just been forever to get where I am right now with you, Lisa. <laughs> it just feels like it's just been forever. So I started out, um, outdoors. I think a lot oh. of photographers do. A oh, lot of yeah. photographers, when I first started out, you know, everything was like landscape. When I was in high school, I took a class in photography and I was like, this is it. You know, yeah. I love this so much. And I really wanted to pursue it then. So then it just kind of escalated and fast forward, you know, it was out outdoors. And then, um, I started getting into a little bit of the, um, natural light indoors, so I was a natural light mm. photographer for about 14 years before I switched over to studio light. Really? That was, that was like a culture shock. Like, oh, I don't wow. know. That blows I know. my mind. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it was just something that I fell in love with a long time ago. Natural yeah. white was just so gorgeous. I loved it. Um, yeah. And I hate to say this, but it was cheaper because I didn't have to get a lot of studio equipment. Like I didn't have to buy yeah. lights. I didn't have to buy re- uh, receivers and transmitters and all this stuff. You know, I had a beautiful natural light studio may, uh, built, but right beside my house. And I was in there for a while. I was in there for a very long time, which I started mm-hmm. out in my dining room like most people do. And then I switched over when I just busted out of my house. I was like, okay, it's time to build something. So we built, yeah. um, that little studio and it, it was great for a while. And then we sold the house, sold the studio. Then I needed a space and there was no spaces for natural light photographers around here. There was no spaces that yeah. had natural light. So yeah. we just plunged in head first and went studio light, bought a commercial space on main street in our town and just went fast went forward. For it. <laughs> we just ah. really did. We, I mean, literally we just never stopped running and just kept on and kept on. And so I've been in this actual space for about two years. And, um, I think it's just, it's just grown. And as far as my client base, yeah. it was, um, like I said, it was digital first. And then I switched over, uh, I think it was like 2018, 2000 and, maybe 2017, 2008. No, I think it was 2018. So to 2018, I switched over from digital to, um, IPS full. Like I did not gradually go. I just went, Bip, we're going. So I Boom. changed yeah. everything. I lost a lot of clients because it was just not what they were wanting. Then I had to build up that clientele. And then yeah. as I went on with the clients, um, so I had a little bit lower pricing in IPS. So it was a little bit lower and I gradually raised them and then I gradually yeah. raised them. And I found that the more that I raised my prices, the more value, um, clients that I found. And then I was just like, you know, these are the clients that really value what I do and desire it. And I was, I was thinking, why would I, why would I want to book clients that don't desire what I offer? So I just, you know, I raised my prices. It was, it was challenging to do that. Yeah. Very scary because me and my husband both do this full time. We don't have extra jobs. Yeah. This is, this is what we do. And, uh, it was just one of those sacrifices and risks that we decided that we were going to take. I just, you know, I feel like now it was the best decision for me to, pursue those clients because Mm -hmm. they value what I am passionate about and what I love to do. And just the whole experience, I I always thought, I'm like, you know, it shouldn't just be a snap and go. It shouldn't be that way because these are memories that are supposed to last forever. And I want it to be magical and I don't want it to be scary and I don't want it to be uncomfortable and like, oh, we got to go take pictures. You know, I don't want it to feel like that. So I kind of just switched everything and I found that booking those high end clients and having a high end studio is where I find happiness because I'm Mm. making my clients happy because they value Mm. what I do. And it just kind of like this big circle of like, everybody loves everything and I love everybody and I love everything. And it's just like, there's, you know, obviously it's not all, you know, rainbows and fairy tales and stuff. But, you know, for the most part, the clients that actually book with me, it's, I love it. And my clients love me. I love my clients. I serve my clients to, you know, best of my ability. And it's just, it's wonderful, but it did not happen overnight. It did not happen overnight. It was a lot of hard work, a lot of tears, lots and lots of tears, a lot of headaches and doubt a lot of doubt. Like, why did I do this? Should I not have done this or should I have done something different? And oh my goodness, there were so many times I was just like, I need to quit because I just, yeah, like, you know, I don't want to do this anymore because this is not panic moments. Yeah. 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 But then when I had that moments when you're not getting inquiries and you're just like, Oh my God, what am I doing? (laughs) We're not going to have money. (laughs) I know. So, and then it was just like, you had that one client where it was like, this is why I do this. This was an amazing session. They love everything. They, 
they actually bought wall art and they bought this and they bought that and they just really valued everything. And then it just kind of jumpstart me again. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. Yeah. This is, I'm not quitting because I want this for my clients and I want them to feel yeah. that. And I was like, no, I can't stop. I can't, I can't stop this. <laughs> So I love that. What I love that you touched on there is that success truly really isn't linear. Like it's like it's, there is a roller coaster and then waves, you're going to have ups and you're going to have downs and it's just not giving up. Like it's literally the only secret is like, just keep going. I, yes, I think you have to have the mindset of being persistent and knowing what you want. So you have to have a goal and you have to plan, you know, they say that, you know, if you plan or what is it? Plan. Fail to plan, plan to fail. Yes. Yes. There it is. (laughs) I was like, oh my goodness. But yes. So it's like, you have to have those goals and you have to have that vision of saying, you know, this is what I want and I'm not going to stop until I get it. And you have to understand that there's going to be a lot of hard times and you're and you're going to get over it. It's only for a season. It's going to pass and you're going to, you're going to reap that harvest, but you have to just keep moving and keep going forward and just be persistent. Like you cannot think about the what ifs that, that that's very hard for me. Cause I'm, I'm always thinking, well, what if I did this or what have I done that? So you just have to tell yourself, you know, this is it. This is what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to do it and just do it. Like you really have to get that mindset. That's a huge thing for people. It's like, we can't seem to get over the mind is, is so powerful both ways, you know, the doubt and the fear or you you can convince yourself that you're going to do it or you can convince yourself that you're going to fail. And the only one that's in the driver's seat is you. Yeah, exactly. And you just have to just choose to do that. You have to choose to just be yep. presented and persistent and move forward. Yep. Agree. All right. Well, I'm going to circle down to some inspiration. So oh, your, your photography, your, your art really is their unique pieces of art. So I want to ask, where are you drawing your inspiration from? Well, I have a few artists that I follow, a few photographers that I follow, and I really found, um, that they are, it's sort of like a combination of these two photographers and, and a, a few other things too. But Lola Milani is one of my favorites. Um, oh yeah. She's so inspiring. I love her creativity. It's almost like I just feel it coming through when I'm watching. I'm just, I feel it kind of filling yeah. my soul. Like I can just feel it. And then things start mm-hmm. kind of like my mind just starts Popping. going. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's just like ideas there, there, yeah. and there, and there. Cause she's just, yeah. it's just full of inspiration. And, um, Natasha eats. I love Natasha eats. She's oh, I love incredible. Natasha. She's, she's such, I, she's such a good human. She's just like <laughs> one of a kind, uh, her and Lola yeah. both are just one of a kind and so different. They're completely different. Yeah. And I feel like I drawn from both of them to create a specific look that I love to create. And a lot of things happen in Photoshop too, like magic happens and things like that, that I've created for myself and the style that I have. Um, but those, those two photographers are probably on the top of my list as far as inspiration Mm -hmm. for photographers. And also too, um, I, when I started working with fabric, which I know this is the class that I'm teaching, but fabric is such a wide range of, of things, ideas, and just creativity. I feel like it's me. I feel like I'm a piece of fabric and I could just be molded in all different kinds of way to create Mm. different things. And I feel like that's just so amazing that I can take something not very valuable. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a piece of fabric, but I can create something incredible and meaningful yeah. and inspiring and gorgeous. And I just feel like that, you know, sometimes I just feel like I'm a piece of fabric and I'm just all over the place yeah. and flowing here and there. And, but, yeah. um, I feel like once I've kind of dived into fabric that has really pulled a lot of inspiration just from inside of me, just creating yeah. 
uh, on set, like I'll just take a piece of fabric and I'll just say, you know, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And I just started, just, it just starts flowing. Yeah. Um, and my clients love it. They absolutely, and I don't, sometimes I don't have a plan. Yeah. I just wing it and they love it. They just, they're like, oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. And you made that other yeah. piece of fabric. Yeah. Um, and also to just, you know, bringing elements in and just, you know, creating different things. Um, uh, I'm, I'm on Instagram all of the time and I, I love like finding like, uh, fashion photographers and of course, um, like different, um, like I love movies. I love movies. So I yeah. see, sometimes I see things in movies that I'm like, okay, that is really cool. I want to try to incorporate things like that. Um, but I mean, really, I love to just create on set. I find a lot of yeah. my inspiration comes from just winging it. Just, yeah. just start with something. If I don't like it, I change it. And I just keep yeah. stacking on top and top and top. And I'm like, wow, this turned out amazing, you know? And it's just sort of one of those things yeah. where it just happens. And I'm like, wow, this is so fun. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I think it's so fun. I love that you touched on movies and like, cause that's one thing like mu movies or music and like, I don't know. It's love so funny music. when you just catch an idea. My favorite though is Pinterest. Like I, oh, yes. I've been going through yeah. this. Um, I'm, I'm really into fine art and like, yes, just paintings from like the 17. I know. Like I've been seeing that. It's so cool. I'm such a little, I am such a little weirdo, I think but it's I'm amazing. just letting myself, <laughs> like, I'm just letting myself like, let your freak flag fly like just, just do it show your weird just yes. show your weird it's so fun I love it, it is so fun so yeah it's been that's been my little but inspiration i love this stuff that you're putting out it's <laughs> really incredible Thank it's you. so so pretty it's so cool to see you kind of transform you. everything <laughs> it's fun it, you know it's i spend a lot of time telling because like part of my job really is finding incredible photographers like yourself and we create these amazing retreats and so like over the years, we've probably worked with easily 300 incredible world renowned photographers. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't realize what that would do to me. And yeah. like when your comparison brain starts mm -hmm. kicking in and finally I just had to sit down and have a talk with myself and say, Hey dude, like stop telling yourself you're crap. Exactly. Like you're not. <laughs> like, it's so hard to do that because it's you. Right? You know, yeah, I can tell just, a client all day long that they're gorgeous yes. and they're beautiful and all these things. And I go home and I'm like, I gotta get wrinkles taken out. I need to fix this. <laughs> I need to fix that. Or that, looks, that doesn't right. look right. I don't like that. And we've got to stop doing that just, because what, know, we, what comes out is what's going to manifest. And we don't want that. Yeah. You know, mm -mm. we really have to, we really have to value ourselves before we can value yes. anyone else. Um, sort of like you're kind of, um, faking it or being someone else yeah. or wearing a mask or whatever. It's like, yeah, that's not really who you are. And, um, that's unfair to our clients because we're pretending to yeah. be something that we're not. And we don't, we don't believe what we're telling our clients for ourselves. Yeah. And, um, that in the long run, that's not, that's not healthy. So it's not healthy you at know, all. Yeah. Start loving yourself. Cause then that way yeah. you can love your clients even more. Yep. Yeah. Boom. Mic drop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you ready for our lightning round? Oh, yes. Okay. Coffee or tea? Both. Yeah. I have, I have, a, I love both. So it's, it's hard for me. Yeah. That's a good one. Last thing you did for yourself as an indulgence. Uh, uh, see, that's the thing. I don't, I don't have a lot of indulgence <laughs> for myself, but I feel like, um, <sighs> that doesn't count. Like giving myself to other people, like my kids and my husband and spending yeah. time with them is like, that makes me happy. You know what I'm saying? It, but it's not yeah. for myself. Like, but I don't know. That doesn't count. I, I really don't do any, any indulgence for myself. I don't, I don't really do anything. I need to do that. Okay. That's your homework. Okay. That's, that's your my homework. homework. I'm going to do that for myself. Okay. I'm going to go get a facial. I'm going to go get a facial. I've been do wanting it. a facial. Yeah. I'm going to go do it because Lisa told me do to. It. I'm going to do it. Yes. Okay. Yes. I love this. Okay. When I started doing, because I, I was the same way a few years ago. Yeah. And finally I was like, you know what, for Christmas, I asked my husband, you know, you know what I want? I want a once a month massage. 
Oh, wow. And I want a, I want a year of massages. So I found a place and like, she's relatively inexpensive. It's like $75 for a 90 minute massage. And I go once a month and it is just like that one treat for myself. And nice. yeah. So like, that's so nice. When started, like when I started scheduling and like making that time for my own joy and my own self, I don't know, just and do self care, yeah. self care and self love. Yes. I really, it really started. I started making differences in different areas too. And that's great. I need yeah, to do it that. Was fun. I need to do that. So your homework lot. is get, get your facial. <laughs> yeah, come get my facial. So do you have any personal projects going on right now? And if so, what is it? Well, I actually, we, um, I just launched my first workshop, um, with Kelsey Freeman. We're having a maternity (gasps) workshop. I love Kelsey. Kelsey is incredible. I love Kelsey so much. Um, we actually met a few years ago and at a retreat, like an in-person retreat and, she was just so sweet and lovely. And then we've just stayed connected ever since. And, um, I was like, I'm coming to Atlanta, Georgia. Let's do a workshop. She's like, (sighs) let's do it. So we did, we planned it and we're going in March. I'm so excited. It's almost sold out, which is crazy, but, um, we're really excited about that one. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to have any more in-person workshops. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm not sure, but, um, we do, we are renovating our studio. Um, so that's a project that we're working on. We are, we're creating a more luxury space for our clients, um, having a little makeup place and um, a dressing room with more gowns and just, um, I'm going to get more artwork up and just really freshen up the place and really, um, let it reflect who I am now, because I feel like I've grown Mm -hmm. over the last few years and I really want that to reflect when they come in. I want it to be like, wow, okay, this is where I want to be. So, um, we're working on that. Um, and I just launched, uh, maybe a month or two ago, I launched my Academy. I have been (gasps) wanting to do this since I was in my twenties, like, like early bird, like photographer, like I've always wanted to have a place where I could just share my heart and everything that I'm learning with other photographers, because I feel like there's, well, now there, there is a lot more you know stuff out there, but at the time I felt like there's like nothing out there, there for nothing. people to learn or to like really, um, figure out what is what with photography. And it's just taken me a long time to get to where I want to be with this, but we okay. did, we launched the Academy, um, it's slowly going. I, I have a few videos up and, but it's just, it's just in a baby stage right now. It's just a baby, I uh, but I love it. And I'm getting a lot of good feedback from it. So we're, we're adding content that all the time, like literally every time we can start filming, we're doing it and we're putting it online. So we're really excited about that. Um, I don't know if there's anything else except for just the Milky Way retreat. Uh, yes. This is so Can amazing. You... I'm so yes. ex- like, literally this has been on my bucket list since I don't even know when, like this was on mm. my list for such a long time. This is really a dream. Like, I don't, I can't believe mm. I'm here with you, Lisa. This is incredible. Like mm. I don't want to cry, but oh. I really, this is so surreal. I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe that I'm here in this season of my life. Um, it, it's just incredible. I, I don't know. I just, I feel like, is this really happening? But yeah, (laughs) it's just so sweet. Oh my goodness. This is just crazy. I'm, I'm so excited. Like my face hurts because I'm smiling so much. (laughs) I love it. So speaking of the retreat, can you share what you're going to be teaching on? Oh my goodness. Okay. So we're going to be doing fabrics, um, creating designer gowns with fabrics, creating, (gasps) um, flowy fabrics and just anything you can think about with fabrics. I'm going to share how I use my seamless paper, how I use, um, canvas and how I use fabric backdrops. So you're getting a big, like a big, like array of things. Like it's not just one thing, you know, uh, fabric on a seamless paper. Like you're getting a whole bunch of things and I'm using different types of fabrics. Um, I'm going to show you how I create dresses on set on my model, like how I do it and everything. And the best thing is you don't have to sew. You don't have to sew. It's just, (laughs) it's just draping. It's incredible. It's so fun. And 
I'm going to show you how you can do it. It's super easy, super simple. I love that. And I'm only using one light. So it's not like you have to have a whole bunch of equipment. It's just, it's going to be amazing. Like it's going to be so fun. It's going to be easy. (laughs) And like, I feel like after you see the class, you're going to see immediate changes. Like literally the next session that you have, if you implement the few things that we went over, incredible. I mean, literally life changing. I I just feel like it's going to be incredible. I'm and so you're excited. Showing an, an edit, you're showing your editing too? I am. I'm going to be yeah. showing my editing too. Yes. So you get the start to finish. Yes, start to finish. It's yeah. going to be incredible. I am just I so it. excited. And it's a lot of new <laughs> things that I that I haven't really done before. Um, yep. So it's, it's exciting for me, but it's exciting for the students because it's fresh, it's new, it's never been done as far as for yeah. me. And I just feel yeah. like it's just going to be incredible. I'm so excited I love to it. share it. So <laughs> good. So good. So I need to ask, what has been the best piece of business advice you've ever been given? Okay. I feel like this is a given, um, from most teachers and photographers, um, that have been through a lot in their career. Um, and it's, it's hard, especially, you know, when you're starting out or if you just, you're in a rut, um, you know, you have to understand that this is a business and as much as we love it, and it's, it's our passion and we love it. We have to understand that it's a business and we really have to invest. That's a huge word because I feel like we all say that we need to invest in our business and in ourself, which we are our business. You know, if you, this is your baby. You have to invest in it. If you don't take care of it, it's going to become weak and it's going to die. Okay. So we don't want that. So we want to invest and nourish and care for our business. And once you have made that decision, uh, I'm going to do this. The first thing you need to do is you need to invest in the knowledge on how to do what you want to do. You need to get all the, the wisdom from all of the greats, just Find someone and just really get everything you can. Don't try to do it on your own because that is so long time ago. Okay. There's so long time ago. We don't need to do that because we have so many resources. Find someone, soak up all the information, everything you can think of, and then hit the ground running. Don't stop. Just keep going and always try to keep like, for me, I don't want to stop growing. I don't want to do the same thing over and over and over again. Like I want to just keep, it's like this pool of water. I just want to keep getting more and more and more and more filled. And I don't want to stay a small little puddle and just do the same thing over again. I just want to keep growing and keep, keep, um, investing in my knowledge and keep trying, experimenting and doing all these things. And I feel like, you know, starting out, getting the knowledge that you need for the business, investing in yourself, which is going to be getting the knowledge that you need for your business and don't give up. Find, if it's a mentor, find someone that's going to push you. It's going to inspire you and don't lose focus. Just don't waver. Just keep your eye on the prize and Don't worry about anybody else. Don't worry about anybody else. You focus on what you want and you go for it. Just, and, and really, I know it's really hard to do, but you have to start somewhere. You're not always going to be like a hundred percent on your side. You know, (laughs) you know, it says this is the way it is being a business person. It's like, it's not easy, but you have to have the mindset of just don't ever give up invest in yourself. You're worth it. You have to tell yourself you're worth it. If you have to start watching some motivational speaking, do it. It it will fill you and it will change your mindset because a lot of the times we're speaking the negative. We're speaking the doubt. We're speaking the fear. But if we have someone else speaking life 
and speaking joy and encouragement into us, then that's what we're going to be thinking about. We're going to be thinking, okay, yeah, I can do this. Oh yeah. If that person did that, I can do that. Oh yeah, I can do this. And Mm -hmm. it's just kind of like a snowball effect. You're just going to keep going and keep going and keep going and start those good habits and leave all the bad habits away and just keep going, keep moving forward. Love that. So I love to end my interview just with this last question, and it is, what are you currently curious about or artistically curious about? Um, I don't know. (laughs) Let's see. (laughs) Um, I don't know. This is a hard one, Lisa. So when you see if you're lying in bed at night or you're sitting on the phone, what do you find yourself just Googling or looking up? (laughs) Oh gosh. <laughs> Me, it's see. like everything. I know. It's like everything. <laughs> I have a, <laughs> so yeah. Um, like, oh my goodness. So I do, I, a lot of the time I'm looking for inspiration for my next session. I'm looking for, mm. um, something that will spark something inside of my, mm. my brain. And I'm just like, okay, And then I just start going crazy and I'm just like, I have so many ideas flowing and then I have to write them down and I'm like, okay, now it's time to go to bed. And I'm and I'm like, I'm wired. I can't go to sleep. But a lot of the time I'm focusing on what can I do for my business? How can I serve my clients better? Um, what's something creative that I can create? And I'm always looking for that, that next inspiration. I'm looking for something that's just going to spark something inside of me. And I, and I never, I never want to be. Um, uh, like in a standstill of like, mm, I don't know what to do. And, you know, I don't, I'm in a rut and I've been in many ruts many, many times, but I feel like if I, if I can just keep finding inspiration, then I can keep creating and I don't have to be in a rut. Uh, and then I just try new things. Like I'm always trying new things. So I feel like if I'm laying in bed at night, I'm, I'm probably scrolling for inspiration for my next session or Love it. my next creative thing. I don't know. And then of course it's just like business, a lot of business stuff yeah. goes through my mind. Um, trying to make everything better. Like I've always, yeah. I just want to make everything better than it was yesterday. And yeah. so, yeah, that's, yeah. I love it. That's Yay. Great answer. <laughs> well, Leela, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been wonderful, Lisa. Oh, my beautiful friends. I hope you've loved this conversation just as much as I did. I am sending you so much of my light and my love today and every single day. We will see you next time.